Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Especially want to thank uh, President Erdogan for joining me here. Welcome everyone, all the uh, countries that are representing uh, their people. I want to talk about uh, Islamophobia because of my sporting uh, career. I spend a lot of my time in, in England and traveling in Western countries. So I've seen this phenomena grow. And I think it's very important to address it. Because it's especially people, Muslims living in Western countries, are now increasingly subjected to Islamophobia, which is, which is going to have consequences unless it's addressed. Consequences because we all know that marginalization of any community leads to radicalization. We have seen, I have seen Pakistani community in England marginalized in Manchester, areas of Manchester and in Birmingham. And we have seen uh, radicals coming out of these communities. And we have seen the same process in Europe because of Islamophobia. So I just want to take this opportunity to address this issue. The biggest damage done to, uh, to Muslims is that after 9-11, terrorism was associated with Islam. So Islamic terrorism, Islamic radicals. And constantly this word, these words were used by leaders of Western countries, explaining that 9-11 you know, uh, terrorists and, and any acts of terror that took place after that. The moment you use the word Islamic radicals, it means that there is something in Islam that produces radicals. That it's because of Islam they are being radicals. That terrorism is associated with Islam. And especially suicide bombing. Because we heard these, regularly we heard these commentators saying that, you know, they are, Muslims are indulging in suicide attacks because we'll have virgins in heavens. This sort of nonsense kept going on. Just a brief, anyone who knows about history, desperate human beings throughout, throughout history have committed what are called suicide attacks. Before 9-11, 75% of suicide attacks were by Tamil tigers, who were Hindus. No one talked about Hinduism having anything to do with that, with the suicide attacks. And everyone, we have watched so many films of uh, the Japanese suicide attacks on American ships at the end of Second World War, no one blamed their religion. Because religion has nothing to do with, uh, no religion has anything to do with terrorism. Almost all terrorism is connected to politics. It's political perceived injustices that produces desperate people. But constantly, and even now, we keep hearing about radical Islam. There is only one Islam, the Islam of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which we follow. There is no other Islam. In human communities, majority are moderates. They are liberals, and on one side, they are fanatics everywhere. You, well, what about the white supremacists who walk into and kill uh, 49 worshippers in, in New Zealand? What has that got to do with religion? So it's very important. This is the best forum. We must talk about it. Muslims must talk about separating terrorism with Islam. Yes, Muslim societies have fanatics. Same as Christian societies, same as Jewish societies. And let's not forget that in India, extremists have taken over the country, racial extremists. So number one, my point is, that it, this has to be addressed. We keep hearing world leaders talk about radical Islam. It is causing, huh, how is a man in the street in, in New York supposed to tell who's a radical Muslim and who's a moderate Muslim? How can anyone tell? So all Muslims are branded, Islam is, Muslims are branded as, as, as uh, fanatics, terrorists. And whenever some sort of attack goes, uh, 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 a terrorist attack happens in the West, first thing, Every Muslim starts worrying, I hope it's not a Muslim. 
because immediately we are all branded. And I remember after 9-11, I got a, uh, after 9-11, I get a phone call from this Western journalist, and he said, aren't you really ashamed of what, what has happened? There are 1.3 billion Muslims. Am I supposed to be ashamed of what anyone does, in, in the, uh, any Muslim does? So that's number one point. Second, I have seen this since uh, that awful man, Salman Rushdie, produced a book called The Satanic Verses. It was mocking, ridiculing a holy prophet, peace be upon him. Uh, and I realized because I was uh, playing sports at that time and I, you know, I uh, spent a lot of my time in, in England and I understand the Western mindset. <coughs> People in the West could not understand the pet it caused to the Muslim world. Because Europe especially, they do not regard religion as we Muslims regard. We live our religion. They don't, they have a completely different <coughs> attitude to religion. When I first arrived in England as an 18 year old, there was a film called Life of Brian, a comedy mm. by Monty Python's Flying Circus. Mm. It was a caricature about, uh, about Jesus Christ. Uh, so I, it was the first shock to me. They don't look at the, the European societies particularly does not look upon religion like we do. And unfortunately, this I blame us, us Muslim leaders. We have not explained to the Western societies how painful it is when our prophet is maligned, mocked, ridiculed. It causes... Why does it cause so much pain to us? Because the prophet lives in our hearts. And we all know that the pain of the heart is far, far, far greater than physical pain. All we want is, and I think we should convey uh, President Erdogan and other Muslim leaders, we should all c convey to the, to the Western leaders, especially the Western leaders, that the way, the, the sensitive way Holocaust is treated in the West, because it gives pain to the Jewish people. And quite rightly, it should be. The, the world should be sensitive to them, what gives them pain. Similarly, we want them to be as sensitive to the Muslims. When there is, when, when someone ridicules, blasphemes our Prophet Wasallam. And, and I think it's very important for communities to live together, to understand each other. And therefore, these two points, in my opinion, have contributed more to Islamophobia than anything else. Because every two or three years, someone in, in the European uh, or, 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 or US cities, someone, someone comes up with uh, a character of a prophet, peace be upon him, or, or or this is something which is derogatory, there's a reaction amongst the Muslims, and then everyone says, look what an intolerant religion it is. Immediately, the gulf between the communities widens because they don't understand why it's causing us pain. We haven't explained to them, and yet there is a certain small section of society which knows that it's going to cause us pain, and they deliberately do it to make the fishes wider. So this is a great forum, the UN. Uh, all world leaders are here, uh, and I will be talking about this in my speech on Friday as well. But I feel that it is important that us Muslim leaders convey these two things, because all it does is it creates uh, fissures amongst human beings. And anything that creates fissures, this is the forum where we should try to unite humanity. Thank you. وزیر اعظم عمران خان نفرت انگیز گفتگو کے خلاف کانفرنس کا انعقاد کیا گیا تھا پاکستان اور ترکی کی طرف سے اس سے خطاب کر رہے تھے وزیر اعظم عمران خان کا کہنا تھا کہ نفرت انگیز تقاریر اور اسلام و فوبیا کے خلاف اقدامات اٹھانے کی بہت شدید ضرورت ہے جناظرین اسی کانفرنس میں جو ہے وہ ترکی کے صدر رجب طیب اور دوان نے بھی سارے خیال